Social Filtration System What is the social filtration system? Wide to narrow. That's the mantra for the social filtration system. Let's make sure we have our definitions correct. Strangers are people we don't know. Acquaintances are people we know on a surface level. Friends are people we know on a deep level. The purpose of the social filtration system is to turn strangers into potential acquaintances and acquaintances into potential friends. We start off wide. Let's say we're going to a networking event. We see a bunch of strangers. Remember, every friend that we have was once a stranger. So we don't see strangers alone. We see social opportunities. The 50 strangers are 50 social opportunities. Next, we want to break the ice with them. So we break the ice with them. They have this wall up, and our goal is to gradually bring this wall down. We bring this wall down with simplicity and open body language. We're going in with the intention of building a bridge with them. Next, we have two options. Discard or take the person further down the social filtration system. Turn stranger into acquaintance. Discard. This is for the groups of people that are not receptive, not our type of people, or other. We can discard them because the conversation is purposeless. Don't be rude, just excuse yourself in a friendly way. Acquaintance. On the other hand, if a synergistic bond is there, you can help this person and they can help you, then this is a potential acquaintance. What is an acquaintance again? It's a person that we have a surface-level relationship with. What are a couple of acquaintances that we can think of? Our plumber, our barber, our electrician and such. So at this point in the social filtration system, we've turned a stranger into an acquaintance. This is a person we have the I'll scratch your back as long as you scratch my back mentality with. We collect their contact info and we ping them every now and then. From these acquaintances, a few are going to go further down the social filtration system. They're going to become the coveted friend. A friend is someone that we have a deep relationship with. For that deep relationship to occur, we need to go from small talk to deep talk. Deep Talks How to Have Deep Talks It's been years since the college best friends have all been in one location together. One friend is visiting from Philly. The other friend is visiting from New York. You and your buddy in Tampa are hosting them. After a long day of chilling, the sun is setting. You guys sit outside at the patio and talk about life. You all talk about the ups and downs. You guys talk about the difference between being kids at college and adults figuring it out in the real world. The tough parts of being a parent. Joys of climbing the corporate ladder and much more. This is a deep talk. Deep talks mean personal talks. Personal talks mean to understand someone's emotional state. With deep talks, we're getting personal and pushing boundaries. We're turning a formal atmosphere into an informal one. Appreciate small talk, because deep talks don't happen without small talk. A person isn't just going to open themselves up to you if they don't know who the hell you are. That's why we spent time building the foundations with them in the small talk stage. As we build the foundations by understanding disparate pieces of info like their favorite color, first internship, or phobias, we set a solid base to better understand them. Rapport is built. In order to flow well in the deep talk stage, you need to understand two core principles, 4D listening and hooks. 4D listening. 4D listening is when you try to listen with as many senses as possible. When I tell you to picture the word listening, what do you picture? Most likely, you picture ears. This is suboptimal. Are ears a good representation of 3D listening? Yes. Are ears a good representation of 4D listening? No. With 4D listening, you can listen beyond the ears. When I was in Toastmasters, I recall any time I had to give a speech, I would get very nervous. Whenever I would get nervous, I would move my body around a lot. I thought this was the normal way to get nervous. But there was another guy who would sit next to me. 
Anytime he would have to give a speech, he'd get nervous. Right before his talk, he would disappear for a while. By the time he came back, he smelled like cigarettes. After smelling like cigarettes, he didn't look as nervous. If I'm listening with my ears alone, I'm not processing any information. But if I get my nose activated along with my eyes, I can smell and see that this person uses cigarettes to calm down. This is what I call 4D listening. Senses beyond hearing were engaged for me to understand the information. The reason 4D listening is important for deep talks is because people will say one thing and imply something else. If you can read their body language and notice changes in their tonality, you'll assess the situation better. When you're doing deep talks, you're getting personal. And when you get personal, there's a high likelihood of offending someone or overstepping boundaries. Let's say you're asking this person, How come you don't have kids yet? This person suddenly begins touching their neck a lot, giving short responses and is trying to abruptly change the topic. This clearly means that this person is not comfortable with this question. So, by activating 4D listening, we're able to navigate the territory better. Thus far, I've been talking about listening. Let's talk about talking. Hooks. We don't want to just listen the entire time and let the other person talk. When we're listening the entire time, our presence isn't felt. Plus, only listening trains the other person to ramble near us. Unless you insert yourself in the conversation, then you're going to be doing a whole lot of head nodding. As you participate, you'll notice that this person is giving you clues on what you can potentially expand on. Either their tone changes, they talk glowingly about a subject, or they give you an ambiguous insight about a topic. Example, a person says to you, Hey, sorry for being late. I just got out of the hospital and the appointment took longer than expected. What have you been doing today? If you're a dummy, you would ignore the hospital comment and answer what you've been doing today. If you're smart, then you would notice the hospital comment and expand upon that. Wait, why were you in the hospital for? This was an ambiguous insight about their day. To spot hooks, you need to change your operating system from me to you to we. The me operating system is when you're making the conversation all about you. The you operating system is when you're listening but not contributing. The we operating system is when you listen and contribute. To activate the we operating system, view spotting hooks as a game. Whenever you spot the hooks, you add yourself into the conversation by asking questions and contributing while extracting more info from the other person. This lays the foundations for a deep talk.